This video is going to be the first in a series of videos I'm going to do on adding vectors. Now in order to properly add vectors, and the easiest way to add vectors I find is using the quadrant system. And what I mean by quadrant system is this thing here. I've got this guy divided into four spots, hence the quadrant. Now I'm just going to go over some characteristics of the quadrant, and then the next video I'll start talking about converting from one form to another, and the next one will be another form to another, and then we'll get into the addition of the vectors. Now in our quadrant system, we have four quadrants. We have one, two, three, four, and they are labeled as such. Here I've got quadrant number one, quadrant number two, quadrant number three, and quadrant number four. Now we have them kind of backwards. They go in a counterclockwise direction, you'll see here. That's because vectors, when they rotate, and we'll talk about this later on, but they rotate in a counterclockwise direction. So uh, I'm going to label them this way. One, two, three, four. Four. Now when we're dealing with these quadrants, we it's very important that we understand the angles that we're dealing with. Now I'm going to start right here and say that this point right here is angle 0, up here is angle 90. So in quadrant 1, we are dealing with angles between 0 and 90 degrees. Quadrant 2 is between 90 and 180. So again, quadrant 2 is going to deal with angles between 180 and 90, so 90 and 180, and then so on and so on. We've got 180 and 270, 270, and 360. So that's the angles. That's going to be very, very important as we move on in this. Now, as we're looking at the system here, it's very important that we understand how the polarities work in each quadrant. Now, just as a quick refresher for this quadrant system, we're going to talk about the x and the y axis. x axis is anything that runs this way horizontally, y-axis is anything that runs vertically. We have a part here where the intersect, we're going to call that our point of origin. Now anything that is to the right of the point of origin is going to be positive. Anything that is to the left of the point of origin is going to be negative. Anything that is above the point of origin is going to be positive. And anything that is below the point of origin is going to be negative. So when we're dealing with quadrant number one, we can see that we are dealing with something that is in this quadrant here and this quadrant here. On my x-axis, it's positive. On my y-axis, it's positive. Therefore, x is positive and y is positive. This will make more sense as we throw some numbers at it in our next video. Now, if we look at quadrant number two, we're dealing with a quadrant where the x is negative. It's on the left-hand side of the point of origin, but the y is still above the point of origin. So our x is negative and our y is positive. In quadrant number 3, my x is negative because we are to the left, and my y is below the point of origin, so x is negative, y is negative. And to sum things up in, not sum things up, to be talking about quadrant number 4, I see that I am to the right, so my x is positive, but I'm still below the point of origin, so my y is negative. So that's how we work out the quadrant system. Again, we have four quadrants, 1, 2, 3, 4. This quadrant is anywhere between 0 and 90, 90 and 180, 180, 270, 270, 360. And then we have our polarities, positive, positive. This one here is negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative. And that's how the quadrant system works. In the next video, we'll discuss what happens when we throw some numbers at these things, and we're going to start converting from what's called polar to rectangular.